The Triella limestone is a Miocene carbonate deposit and it is found both onshore and offshore in the Carnarvon Basin. This talk, though, is only going to deal with the Triella limestone on the southern Carnarvon platform. And that is not to be confused with the type section, which is up there. The aim of the study was to show that um, salinity differences could be uh, determined in carbonate deposits that were associated with seagrass meadows. The Triella limestone outcrop, as you can see, is typical of a lot of WA outcrop. Uh, it's rubbly, it's thin, it's not inducive to biostratigraphic studies. The top two photos actually show a section that we could actually measure four to five meters of Triella limestone in, but many of the beds were covered with that uh, quaternary um, deposits. So, I must go back. We selected five sites across the platform and we collected a total of 26 samples. From these samples, we looked at the Maya facies of the unit. Uh, it turned out to be a form coniferal rich, packstone, waxstone, grainstone uh, fabric with um, minor mollusks and echinoids Coraline algae. There was a quartz component, but that was quite variable. Out of the forams, the miliolids were dominant and the rotulids were very common. And we actually identified five microfaces, and the general feature of these microfaces were that it was a, this unit was deposited in, along a carbonate bank on the inner shelf. Epiphytic foraminifera. Now, before we start this slide, I just want to take a look at the background photo. That is a photo of seagrass. Seagrass meadows are quite extensive along the coast of WA, and they're found quite commonly worldwide. But considering the extensive nature of seagrass meadows, the plant is very difficult to find in the geological record. And that's because upon death, this plant is very poorly preserved uh, and often not preserved. So to infer uh, seagrass meadows, we often look at the geological faunal assemblage and compare it to the modern seagrass assemblages. Epiphytic foraminifera were very common in the Triella limestone. Um, I have only selected two types here. The top one, circled in blue, was a porcelainous species of sorteds, and its equivalent in modern seagrasses is down here, uh, circled in blue down here. The other group that I selected was the calcareous haline species, uh, and they are also found in modern seagrasses, uh, again circled in red. The epiphytic foraminifera found in the Triella limestone compare very favorably with the epiphytic foraminifera that we see in current seagrass meadows. So the age of this unit. I didn't mention that we didn't find any planktonic foraminifera. That can be problematic when you're looking at aging because most ages are done on planktonic foraminifera. So the aging of this unit here was done on the larger benthic porcelainous foraminifera uh, look at using the East Indian letter classification. There were three genuses that were important, the Ostrotrelina, the Floscinella, and the Pseudotapurina. The presence of Ostrotrelina <coughs> hauchenii suggests that the assemblage is no higher than the TF1 letter stage, while the presence of Ostrotrelina Azumensis and Poscularina globulona, globulina uh, suggest that the assemblage is no higher than the lower TF1 stage. The TF1 stage uh, suggests that the Triella limestone was deposited in the late Bagalian, 
which makes it approximately 16 to 18 million years old. Taxonomy. There's always a problem with taxonomy, especially when you're trying to deal with pin sections and acetate peels. This species is questionable about whether it belongs to the genus sorted or the genus of Amphisaurus. Amphisaura, sorry. Um, this is still under discussion, and when we know the answer, we will get back to you. Previously, it's been put down as a Martinipora, but it's now decided that that's not the genus it belongs to. Right, Shark Bay has come up quite a bit today. Shark Bay has been in quite a few of the talks. So I will continue the theme and talk a bit more about Shark Bay. Shark Bay contains modern seagrass meadows. Uh, these seagrass meadows can be found in a variety of salinities, uh, from the normal salinities right up to the hypersaline salinities. Uh, and they're also in shallow water depths, usually less than 15 metres. This is the analogue we've used for our sample. Um, on the top here, we have a graph of percentage porcelaneous ormonifera. That is data that has been collected from Shark Bay. And as you can see in the normal salinities, the porcelaneous forminifera are not dominant. As the salinity increases, the porcelaneous forminifera become more dominant. The zone in, well, it's gray on my slide, but it looks <coughs> like a, a, a green on this slide. That is the zone that we collect that contains the average of the triola limestone data. Um, our samples had between 39% to 90% of the forminiferal forminifera with an average of 66. Now that places the triola limestone okay, likely to be within the metahaline system. So now we know we have a very shallow water deposit we are in seagrass meadows and probably in a metahaline embayment. The other aim of the project was to place this into a geological, a geographical setting. Hmm. Now to get a metahaline system, we need a barrier. So here we have this triella limestone uh, in a metahaline system, shallow banks, Uh, with a barrier to the east, to the west, um, blocking it off from the actual type section. Thank you very much.